Jupyter. So you can download it. You can already download the, the proof of concept. So you can go to the iOS, uh, to the Android store, and you can look for the BitShares wallet. This is our proof of concept. You can already download it, create an account, and send money. And when you come later, if you want to get some Bitcoins or BitShares, I'm going to show you how to get that. Huh? So and our goal basically is we want to get rid of this. Plastic cards, credit cards, point of sales terminals. This is really ugly. Western Union. Do you know how much they charge to send money abroad? Do you have an idea? 30 years and how much markup on the exchange rate? Roughly 8%. Uh, in certain countries, 15%. So if you send money, you lose 15% uh, if you send it to uh, certain countries in Africa or Latin America. So Western Union, they are charging a lot, a lot of money. There are already some startups that makes it very cheaper. But what do you guess? If I'm a company and I'm sending uh, 10 million from uh, Germany to America, how much do I pay in exchange fees? It's roughly 0 0.12. 15 and 0 0.12 for the same service, uh, just a little bit different money. So Western Union is charging you a lot, especially for regular consumers, and we want to get rid of that. This is, this is ridiculous. Well, we have to make that cheaper. We have to uh, help the people, and that's why blockchain technology is very, very helpful, because the transaction costs are actually zero, nothing, zero percent. So this is our goal with Echo. We want to make money transfer as easy as taking a picture or sending a text message. You can go in any store, you make a picture of the QR code, and you just paid. No transaction fees, very cheap, very easy to do. Another good example for uh, a blockchain usage, this is also something that is developing on the BitShares platform. It's a land register in Ghana. It's a, the company is called Bitland. And what they do, the problem is, especially in Africa, uh, you have a lot of people, they sell you a piece of land, they sell you a house, but they don't own it. They just tell you, oh yeah, 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 I own this house, this is mine, this is mine. Give me, give me $20,000 and we're good. And then the person gives them the money, and then they, they move into the house and say, wow, cool, look at this house. And then the real owner comes and says, like, hey, what are you doing? You're sitting in my house. This, this has happened all the time. And this is a big problem because in Africa you cannot buy any kind of real estate because you cannot develop it. Because you don't know who owns the country, who owns the land. If you want to buy a supermarket, if you want to build it, you don't know who owns the land. The government will not help you. And this is why this in project is very, very interesting. And they got a lot of traction already with 28 different kind of uh, communities who are basically pay taking the land with GPS coordinates and with pictures on the blockchain and they say, okay, listen, this is what I own. It's certified on the blockchain and if you want to buy it from me, you can come up to me, you change the ownership and then you own it, but you have to pay me the money as well. So this is a really interesting way how to use the blockchain technology um, to sh show who owns what kind of property. And this is something that a lot of people are trying to develop also for other things, so for cars, for houses, for books, for clothes, whatever you have, whatever you can imagine. As soon as you want to certify that one person or a certain kind of account owns that property, you can do that over a blockchain. This is another project. They are trying to, to kick Hollywood's ass. Their idea is basically when you are a content creator, uh, are, is somebody from you creating a blog right now? Video blog, text blog, blogging. Is anybody producing um, pictures, photographer? Okay, not really. Um, but this is a really uh, usual case. So if you're a content creator, if you're writing blogs, you're creating books and so on, the problem is you have laws and you cannot really sell the content for the right price. For example, if you create a movie, there's only a certain kind of price you can charge, but if you want to go a little bit lower to really earn some money, maybe you want to uh, sell a movie for 50 cents or 30 cents, there's no way you can do it. There's no platform where you can sell it. And new money basically uh, is, is solving this problem that you can use cryptocurrencies to charge for your content the right price that you want so that people can compensate you for your work. So if you produce something, you don't, if you write some code, you want to get money for that. You don't want to go home without money. Uh, you put a lot of time in and you never get anything back. So this is uh, a thing they are solving. Another thing 
and that is maybe more into the startup thing. It's two Ethereum startups. Uh, they are doing uh, an initial coin offering. That is basically an IPO on a blockchain. So what they did, Digex, it's 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 incredible story. So they issued a token on the blockchain and they told everybody, listen, if you want to help us to build this awesome product, you need to send us money. It took them 12 hours to get 5.5 million US dollars in funding. It's not going to a startup competition, maybe I get 50, 100, 5.5 million in 12 hours. This is massive. This is really a lot of money that you just get to build. Lisk, on the other end, uh, the figure is actually is not right. They had a little bit more time. They, they raised 7.7 .7 million US dollars just for an idea. They don't have a product yet. They just have an idea. This is, this is the power of blockchain you can do. If you have a really brilliant idea with blockchain and you have a community, you can sell it, you can market it, you can get the money together and you get the funding you need. So and this is something you can do on the BitShares platform as well. You can basically create a token. You can create a stock in a certain way. You can sell it to your community, to your peers, and you can raise the money you need for your project. So who of you uh, is planning to do a startup? One, two, okay. Who already has a startup? Okay. So this is a brand new crowd for you. <laughs> well, this is, this is an op opportunity, an option you should consider. If a any of you has an idea, you know, you just want to test it. Can I get some money for that? Even art projects or film projects, or maybe you want to write a cool new app. This is a way how you get money. You can sell it to your community, you can set it up very easily, and you can raise money from worldwide users. So comparing different kind of blockchain technologies. We talked about Bitcoin this mo uh, we talked about Bitcoin. We heard about Ripple already. We heard about Ethereum and BitShares and each blockchain basically is serving its own needs and that makes it very interesting. So you have blockchains who are money transfer blockchains, you have other ones who are more decentralized application blockchains as Ethereum. Then you have some fun blockchains like Dogecoin. It's basically a Bitcoin clone, but the the kids thought why should we not make a coin called after a dog? Yeah, so it's, it's quite big. <laughs> I think it's uh, 12 million in market cap. So it's, it's not a small coin, it's not a small project, but basically each blockchain you're gonna hear about, they have different purposes and they have different kind of applications and speeds. And uh, we are working with, uh, with the BitShares blockchain because they have the fastest uh, transaction times for money transfer. So if you want to do money transfer, uh, BitShares is, is the fastest platform on the block. And this is basically how we're going to end it today. What is, what is BitShares? It's a platform where you can connect with other startups and companies via API. You can share money. You can enable anybody to do money transfer. It's a little bit similar to PayPal. So when everybody hooks up to PayPal, you can send money from one company to another company. Uh, it is also a platform where you can create your own currency. So for example, if you want to create your own currency or own token and you want to sell it, you can do it on this platform. It's also a really good platform for the basics. So you can send money to family and friends. And uh, as already mentioned, so if you have a really cool idea and if you want to start something, you want to start a startup maybe, you want to raise some capital, you can do a coin IPO. Uh, initial coin offering, but you can also build your own exchange. If you thought about maybe, hmm, Bitcoin exchange, I want to trade, I want to help others to get involved in Bitcoin, maybe I should create my own exchange, then you can do it uh, on this here as well. It's all open source. You can just download it on GitHub. You can fork it or you can get your own interface. This is actually the original uh, interface above and this above, uh, below is uh, the maker interface from uh, Ethereum. And that is basically the story about BitShares and Echo. It's a platform where you can build your own applications, where you can do money transfer, very easy. You can also issue your own currencies, you can issue your own tokens, loyalty systems, and many, many more things. And if you want to get involved into cryptocurrencies, this is a really good place to start. So, thank you very much, and I'm open for more questions. Do we have some questions? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can you can see that. Yes. Yeah. It's the same with Bitcoin. Bitcoin you have when you have basically the public key, which is a long hash, you can look it up, you can look into the account and you can see how much money is sitting in that wallet. You can do that in any kind of cryptocurrency. So all this is this is a beautiful thing. So all transactions are public and they are uh, searchable by QR codes or by a so-called blockchain explorer. No. Yeah, yeah. Yes, because I choose to. Because I selected my own name to, to be like this. You can also use different kind of names. You can use basically a hash code, whatever you want. But to make it easier, it's recommended to have an easy name. For example, you can also have a domain name. But if it's like a 20 characters and you tell somebody, please go to www.34878.com, then they don't understand it. Yeah? It's hard to sell. So here, this is a, uh, a system, it's called Titan, uh, where you can basically, this is actually my address. So it's very easy. So if you go here, if you look it up, you can see how much money I have in this wallet. And uh, you can see all the transactions above it. So you can basically have a very easy way. You can tell your grandmother, hey, send me money to this address. It's very easy. Oh. Oh, they don't know yet. <laughs> no, the tax system, of course, it's similar to Bitcoin. If you have a Bitcoin uh, and you hold it more than a year, you don't have to pay tax. If you have it, hold a Bitcoin below a year, you have to pay uh, taxes, 25%. And I think in the long term, it's going to be similar uh, also with Echo when you do payments or if you send money to your friends. Uh, it's going to be a system that at the end of the year, you have to declare all your transactions and you have to pay your taxes because you cannot, maybe, n probably actually nobody can force you to pay the taxes, but it's similar to a company. A company has to pay the taxes. They cannot say no. And the government is coming close down your company. So you cannot really avoid it, uh, but you can use different apps to do that. Well, there are uh, two options how you can do that. So you can basically create, you have a core value similar to, to Bitcoin, it's called BitShares. And with this value or with this coin, you can create a new asset. And this asset has certain kind of uh, features. So for example, it can follow the real value of a euro or a dollar or of a local currency somewhere in Africa. And in this way, the people are trading the local currency it has always the same value. And uh, when they are going to a store to pay with it, the store is basically getting the money. And then he can decide if he wants to pay it forward in terms of salaries, or if he wants to go to an exchange and sell this digital money into cash. Yes, only when you have an exchange. But there's, there's another option, uh, what we are basically trying to build, and that is a personal teller system. Governments will not really like it, but you can imagine like this, you have a personal ATM. So I, I can go to you and I can send you the digital money, you give me the cash, there is no regulation. So this is something that we can imagine in uh, developing countries, that that is very, very interesting because uh, you don't need to have stores or ATM machines and so on, you just have to find somebody who's willing to, uh, to sell and you get the money. Well, the spread is uh, the mid-market rate because uh, we are, that's a, a similar question to the smart contract, how do we get the price feed? So we have uh, different kind of, uh, we don't have miners in our system, we have so-called witnesses and the witnesses are doing the same function. So they're signing each block and they're validating that the pr uh, all the transactions in the block happened and are correct. And these witnesses, they are basically using different kind of sources, for example, yahoo.com, to pull the latest market data. 
how much is exchange rate euro dollar for example they take that and then we are taking all the different kind of income streams of information we build a median so we build the average of it and this is basically uh, giving us the idea how much the current price is for euro dollar exchange or for uh, a bit shares euro exchange and in this way we can have basically mid market rates in that uh, currency exchange and we don't have really a big spread Well, the result would be if you buy euro to dollar, if you do this exchange, how much is left? Well, what is the current price? It's uh, 115. So if you, uh, if you have 115 dollars, you get 100 euro. That's the current uh, mid-market rate. And you would get the same in the system. Yeah, yeah. So on the exchange itself, it's zero. But when you use our app, you have to pay a little fee because we also have to make some money. So we will add a certain kind of markup. But uh, if you do it basically yourself or if, or if you use a different app, then uh, you have a lower uh, fee. Zero. There is there's no fee. Uh, we don't we don't really uh, mine new bit shares, so the witnesses are paid. The vault system has uh, transaction fees, which are very very low. So it's a couple of bits, uh, bit shares, and they will all pooled and paid out to uh, the witnesses, so they get paid for that. Pardon? Yes, everybody can start it. You can even go to Microsoft already, uh, Microsoft Azure. You can start a bit shares node there with a couple of clicks. You just set up your account and then you can start creating a node. Otherwise, we have a very good uh, documentation on GitHub, but also on our uh, main uh, website. So you can easily start a node and you can, but that's a little bit different because um, we don't have thousands of, uh, of nodes in this way. We have a government system in the BitShares platform. So uh, the basically the, the people, the witnesses who can sign the transaction in the blockchain, they need to be voted in by the whole community. So the witnesses have to earn the trust of the whole community to be able to sign and to get paid. It's a little bit uh, different to the, uh, to the Bitcoin blockchain where you have basically miners and when you have mi if you buy mining equipment, if you buy a server farm to do mining, then you get into the Bitcoin ecosystem. So you can buy in. In BitShares, you cannot buy in. You have to earn the trust of the community to be able to sign the transactions. And also, we can also change uh, part of the parameters. So, if for example, if you want to change the block time from three seconds today to one second, then we can do that over a voting mechanism. So, we have uh, another committee uh, account or group. These are around um, 15 people right now. They are elected by the whole community, and they are able to change transaction times, fees, and other uh, system-relevant uh, features. No, they are, they are different persons. No, no, it's not possible. The interesting thing is, I'm going to show it to you, actually. Uh, it's always better to show. So this is basically our blockchain explorer. You can see all the transactions, uh, similar to, to the Bitcoin transaction, you can see the names, so you know who sent money to whom. And uh, here you can see the current committee members, you can see the names and the voting power. So uh, they are different kind of people than the witnesses itself. And they have to be voted in, so if they want to change anything, um, they need to have the power and the, the backing of the community itself. So you don't have really this fight. We talked about uh, the blockchain or the block size uh, debate of Bitcoin. This is a current big problem because each transaction you send over Bitcoin has basically a couple of kilobytes in size. And each 10 minutes, uh, the Bitcoin blockchain just can process uh, one megabyte. So if all the transactions you have are bigger than one megabyte, you cannot do all the transactions so they stack up. And that's a, uh, the problem with Bitcoin because if you have a lot of transactions, a lot of volume, more people coming in, 
then the blockchain cannot process all the transactions in 10 minutes. So it can means that your transaction maybe takes 20 minutes or half an hour. So it can take longer. And this is uh, with our system not possible. No, this, these are the elected people. Um, let me check. So right now we have elected 27 witnesses and stand by it's uh, 48. We are basically running nodes itself. Yes, but it of course can scale up because it's a, it's a young uh, blockchain itself. Uh, so it can scale up. You can easily set it up and uh, get the community power. Yes, so they compete basically with politics. They have to go to the community, they have to sell their, uh, basically their idea of what they want to do. They have to explain why they want to be a witness and what kind of hardware they are running. And as you can see, um, there are certain kind of measurements, there are links where they are basically proposing their candidates. They are a little bit like politicians. So they have to run for candidates, they have to talk to the people and tell them, okay, this is what I do. If you like my work, you can vote for me. And if I do a bad job, if I provide bad data, if I don't sign transactions, you can fire me and I'm out. So it's a little bit different. So when I say, for example, that uh, I don't like Blue, Blue is a strange guy, uh, he's doing really strange decisions, I'm gonna kick him out, I fire him. He's not gonna be paid by me. And if we have a change in our uh, core features, he will not be able to vote. So this is not like Bitcoin. Bitcoin is controlled by five people today. Although it's three million active users in Bitcoin, it's five people who control Bitcoin. So here it's a little bit different. We have uh, the community who votes on the changes. Uh, we do charge fees. Uh, we, can, we can take a look. But they are really, really small. So to get, give you a feeling, so a regular transfer is around 0 0.0022 cents, US dollar cents. So when you do a transfer from you to another wallet, that's what you pay in fees. If you do trading, you can see all the different kind of fees. If you want to create uh, your own token, your own currency, you have to pay. And uh, these fees are all collected and paid out to the witnesses. So basically it's a self-sustaining blockchain. And uh, also a really interesting feature, I didn't talk about it yet, is uh, you can basically apply to the blockchain and you can uh, create a so-called worker. So for example, if you have a good idea, you can propose the idea to the community and if the community likes it, they can vote it and then the blockchain is paying you. They're paying you for your developing work, for your uh, creation and so on. So you can basically write an application to a decentralized blockchain and get paid for your work. A little bit similar to, to the Ethereum DAO. I don't know if you're going to hear uh, later more about this system as well. Do we have more questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Uh, let's take a short break and then we'll resume with Oliver.